Come on, clap your hands all over the room if you know the Lord's been good to you. Come on, if he's done anything miraculous for you, I dare you just go ahead and put your hands together all over the room. Come on, put your hands together all over the room. Put your hands together all over the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are indeed glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. We're grateful to God for his presence. We're grateful to God for his spirit. We're grateful to God for each and every last one of you. I want to thank God to the sovereign, to the son. We give reverence to the spirit, to the sovereign whom we credit for our creation, to the Son whom we credit for our cleansing, and then to the Spirit who we credit for our comfort. Can't speak for anybody else in the room today, but I'm just glad the Lord let me see one more day. I want to thank God for the Sovereign Son, the Spirit, to the servant of this house, my friend, mentor, Brother Reverend Dr. Ivan Sean Pitts. Can we give God some praise for the pastor? I'm grateful again for all of you all just being here. Anybody just glad the Lord has blessed them one more time? Amen. Amen to my friend, Dr. Kemp. So good to see you. Good to see all of you all. I understand that um, Reverend... Reeves, yes. Uh, we're praying for him and the home going of his mother. I believe they'll be celebrating her life tomorrow. Amen. In Little Rock, Arkansas. Is that right? All right. I'm doing all right. I'm batting a thousand. Amen. Uh, are you guys, you guys are celebrating Men's Day here as well. Is that right? No? Somewhat? All right. Don't worry about it. Anyway, we're just happy to be here one more time. There's a word from the Lord today uh, found in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. If it is indeed your custom to stand, I'm going to ask that you do so for the reading of the Lord's Word. If this was court and the judge would walk in, everybody would stand up. Not everybody in the room likes the president, but if he walked in, you stand up. And so you ought to at least stand up for the one that woke you up this morning. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3, starting with verse 17. Habakkuk 3, 17. Thank you. And it reads on this wise. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. 18 reads, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Last verse 19 says, The Lord God is my strength. Somebody should have said something in here right there. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hind feet. And he will make my it will make me to walk up mine high places. To the chief singer on the string instrument. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most holy word. You may be seated in his presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to thank you for the opportunity to preach your word today. God, we thank you for being good to us. We thank you because we recognize that every good and perfect thing, God, it comes from you. God, we thank you afresh because we realize that if it had not been you on our side, we don't know where we'd be today. And so for that, God, we give your name the praise. God, we ask now that you hide me behind Christ and the cross. Let them not see DeAndre, God. Let them see the divine. God, make my tongue as a ready writing pen. 
the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my very redeemer. We'll be careful, cognate, and considerate, giving your name the glory, giving your name the honor, giving your name the glory, giving your name the honor, giving your name the glory. Given your name the honor, your son Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Amen. We want to give God praise for my church that's back home. I currently pastor a church. I pastor a church in a little city called Connorsville, Indiana. The Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We thank God for them. Ask that you all continue to pray for us as we do God's will. Amen. Amen. Um, just for a few fleeting moments, I want to talk from the thought of perpetual praise. Talk from the thought of perpetual praise. Brothers and sisters, it's a true fact. As believers, oftentimes, we suffer from what I like to call spiritual amnesia. We suffer and struggle. Dr. Kemp, for being able to really remember everything that God has done. We tend to oftentimes think it can just be put on the back burner. Why do you say that, preacher? Thank you for asking. I say that because when you come to the house of the Lord, oftentimes you have to be pumped, pushed, and primed to praise the name of the Lord. It's just something about whenever you realize God has done something for you, something ought to ignite on the inside. Say amen and I'll hurry up and get out your way, I promise the real reality to where we are is we tend to forget that where we are, God brought us. Right. What, he is, what you are, he made you. Thanks be unto God where you're going, he's going to take you. But we seem to have spiritual amnesia. We forget that it's by the grace of God that you live it. By the grace of God that you may not have all the money that your heart wants, but you got enough to survive. It's by the grace of God that you don't have what you really deserve. That's the reason why it's hard for me, brother, to understand why, as believers, we don't have a perpetual praise. Nobody should have to stand up, tell you, clap your hand. Nobody should have to tell you, wave your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, stomp your feet, turn in circles, roll on the ground. Because the fact that you're alive this morning. There, somebody got it. I knew it was going to take a minute, but the fact that you're alive this morning is enough for you to at least clap your hands. I don't want you to see what happens. What happens is we get, we get so bougie. We get so sophisticated. We go to school. We get a couple of letters of academia behind our name. And we have the litigated gall to think it doesn't take all of that. I don't have to do that. I know who God is. Yeah, good. You have to understand that when you're in a hard situation, it's not about what you know. It's about what you do. You don't believe me? Come here blind, Bartimaeus. Sitting by the wayside. He didn't see Jesus. He heard about it. Good God from Zion. He heard he was there. Don't do it, Sister Kip. You know, you can push me. Don't do it. He heard. He heard that he was in the hood. And he was sitting over by the wayside and the scriptures declare that the people around him tried to tell him to shut up. I didn't make it up, it's in the Bible. 
They told him, hush. But blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus was there. And he knew what he needed to do to get what he came for. I question the church in the 21st century because struggles and times are harder now than they ever been. When you come to church and you sit looking like you've been sucking on lemons, <laughs> sit with your arms crossed, you don't open up your mouth and say thank you not one time in the whole service. But you expect God to move. Even a baby knows what to do to get your attention. You don't believe me? Get a baby. Let the baby be hungry. Let the baby be wet. Let the baby want to be held and cuddled. I wish y'all get this thing. The baby begins to cry. And guess what? Thank you, Lord, you did it. Uh, if the baby lays there and doesn't say anything, you'll think something's wrong with the baby. Woo! I wish y'all get it. So the baby literally cries. And then when the baby cries, you pick the baby up. You hold the baby. You then begin to want to discover why the cry happened. Oh my God. And somebody in the room, thank you Jesus, has been in a situation of pain. Has been in a situation where you're hungry for more of God. You've been wet behind the tears that you've cried. And you're wondering, God, what is it I have to do? For you to hold me in your arms. What is it I have to do. For you to let me know. Everything going to be alright. First thing you need to do. Is you need to open up your mouth. You need to get his attention. And believe it or not beloved. It does take all of that. It takes all of that. Because what, what did blind Bar do. Bar said over there. He said Jesus. Jesus. Then he began to call his lineage. He said, that son of David. Ooh! In order for you to get what you need, you got to at least be able to know who he is. And if you know who he is, see, here's the thing I remember, and I'm going to preach. I'm, I'm, I haven't gotten to it yet, but I feel God here already. The thing is, I remember my uncle used to live around the corner from my great-grandma. And he would just drive down the block sometime. Kemp, he wouldn't always stop. He'd just drive by to check on things, make sure everything was all right. This one particular day, my grandmother and I were the only two in the house. And she had fallen, and I was a little boy, and I couldn't help her. Mark was driving down the street, and typically I'd just wave. He'd just throw a peace sign, or he'd just honk the horn. But this particular time, I was in need. I didn't know how in the world I was going to lift the burden. Ooh. And what did I do? My uncle's driving down the street. He honks the horn, but I hollered to get his attention. See, it was abnormal. It wasn't the same thing that we would always do. Typically, I'd just holler a peace sign. He'd honk. He'd wave and keep going. But this time, I called his name. Yeah. Woo! When I called his name, he stopped the car, turned the car around, and we helped Grandma up. What am I trying to tell you? When you want something from God, you got to learn how to open up your mouth. You got to learn how to not be too pretty, not be too cute, not be too bougie, but call his name and you'll get an answer. Yeah. All right. The book of Habakkuk. I'm going to do it and I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> book of Habakkuk. It's written against the backdrop of judgment. An unbelievable level of hardship. It was written during a time where the king of Judah led the people back into a state of idolatry and away from the Lord. As a result, God is preparing to judge the nation. Habakkuk, which we consider to be a minor prophet, now, let me put a quarter in a meter pause parenthetically just for a moment and tell you this. Jesus, or God, never put into perspective this major and minor. That was a worldly thing. Hello. We, theologians, put it into a sense of major minor because of the size of the book. But I'm just a fool enough to believe that if God wrote it, it's major altogether. 
I don't care if it's one word, two word, three word. If it's written by God, it's, it's, it's major. So Habakkuk, a minor prophet, is having trouble understanding why God would use a heathen nation like Babylon to pursue his people. Yes. Couldn't understand why God doesn't just purge them from their sins and draw them back to himself and back to righteousness. Some scholars have declared that Habakkuk is similar to Job. He argues his case, but in the end he realizes that God is to be worshipped merely not because of temporal or material or physical blessings of life, but he's simply to be worshipped because of who he is. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thus he ends the words with a song of thanksgiving to God for who he is and for his unchanging benefits. Those belong to him. Real reality of the fact, beloved, is Habakkuk had a reason to fret. But his, he chose to allow the amount of chaos that he was in for him to still be thankful. I believe what Habakkuk is trying to teach us today is I don't understand all that's happening, but I can have a perpetual praise. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand why my money is funny. My change is strange and my honey is tripping. But I'm going to have a perpetual praise. What does the word perpetual mean, preacher? Thank you. Thank you for asking. It's an adjective. Meaning never ending or changing. Synonyms are everlasting, eternal, long lasting, constant, permanent, occurring repeatedly. Are y'all here? so frequently as to seem endless and uninterrupted. Are y'all in the house this morning? Yes. The synonym meaning eternal, ceaseless, relentless, non-stop, uh -huh. meaning it's valid at all times. Your praise yeah. is valid all right. at all times. Yeah. You don't have an expiration date on your praise. You don't have you know, they say, praise God now for the next 30 seconds. When the 30 seconds are up, you don't have to stop. Because real praise happens outside of these four walls. See, a true praise doesn't take anybody else to tell you on your mark. Get sad. Go. No, you don't need that. My grandmama used to say it like this, when I think of the goodness of Jesus... Y'all not in the house today. That's cool. Yeah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, see, it don't take much for somebody that really has a story. Right. See, when you think, you ought to thank. Right. Say it again. When you think, you ought to thank. When I think of how good he's been, all I can do is just say, thank you, Lord. Yeah. When I think of all that he's given me that I know I really don't deserve, all I can say is, thank you, Lord. When I realize that I've got a cattle on a thousand hills, he's got a cattle on a thousand hills, I just say, thank you, Lord. When you think you ought to thank, first thing we'll do when I'm moving, first thing we understand or we realize is that his sovereignty never changes. His sovereignty never changes. Truth of the matter is that situations change. Circumstances change. People change. Say it again. People change. Quick, fast, in a hurry. People change. Matter of fact, I think the OJs called them backstabbers. Say they smile in your face. Talk to me, OJ lovers, all the time trying to take your place. Uh, matter of fact, then we call Two-Face. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure y'all in the house. Circumstances change, people change. But God's sovereignty never changes. I may not be able to rejoice in my situation, but I can always rely on the Savior. I may not understand my mess, but I really understand who the master is. Verse 18a starts off with the Lord. You know the Lord, don't you? 
I say, you know the Lord, don't you? The I am that I am. The will in the middle of a will. Shelter in the time of, do you know the Lord? Starts off saying the Lord, the one we can depend on in the midst of despair, the one that lifts us when we're low, the one that helps us when we're hurting, the one that fixes us where we're faulty, covers us from our chaos, purges us from our pain. You do know the Lord, don't you? The Lord never changes. As a matter of fact, I believe he has a perfect attendance record. When I was lonely, didn't know which way to turn, present, he was there. My heart was broken, felt all alone, present, he was there. I was going through a divorce and I didn't know which way to turn, present, he was there. I wish y'all be real for a minute, don't just look at me. Like I'm the only one that's ever been there. Late in the midnight hour when I thought about committing homicide, he was there. Somebody in the room may have even contemplated suicide, he was there. His sovereignty never changes. Never got to worry about God flaking out on you. Yeah, we got to worry about, you know, I'm a, I'm a major football fan. Love football. Uh, I just so happen, I'm going to say this and then get the car. Yeah, get the car. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Born. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I told you get the car, didn't I? I told you. Lord of mercy. Uh, get the car. Uh, and so, uh, this past Thursday, anybody who watches it, I saw my boy. I saw my boy go down. And mother, when I saw him go down, mother, I was nervous. I, I didn't know. <laughs> didn't know what to do. I said, Lord, this is the MVP. This is the number one quarterback in the NFL. I don't care what y'all say. That boy is bad. He can throw the ball from the right hand and the left hand. And I saw him go down, mother, and I said, Lord, I've been talking all this smack. I know you got a bigger plan. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. But uh, no, so and I, I saw him go down and I was nervous. I was nervous and I said, this is it. I'm not going to hear the last of this from any of my friends or cousins. But we won the game. We won the game which gave us a level of hope. Because if you saw the game at all, you'll understand that something happened with the team that hadn't been happening for the last two games. The defense showed up. The defense showed up. That's right. Defense showed up and helped us to win the game. What am I trying to tell you? I'm not trying to teach you football. I'm trying to help you to understand that when it seems as if your situation has fallen apart. You serve the kind of God that has a good defense. I wish you talked to me. And it looks like all hell is breaking loose. But there it is. The front line shows up. And they plant their feet and they stop the quarterback. Because his sovereignty never changes. Second thing. His salvation never ceases. Salvation never ceases. The word salvation in our text today, Kemp, applies to more than just our soul. It will suggest that the word salvation also means to deliver and rescue. And I wish if you just help me preach for a minute, look at somebody and just tell them he's coming to rescue and deliver. Oh, that's good news for somebody. Somebody should have gotten excited. Because where you are right now, you may seem to be in a low place, but I just stopped by to let you know he's coming. To deliver and rescue you from wherever you may be this morning. He, he's coming to lay a lifeline down, baby. Don't, don't give up. Don't give in. He, he's coming to deliver and to rescue. Things may be bad, but he's coming to deliver and rescue. You may have trouble on every side, but he's coming. 
to deliver and rescue. We may lose everything, but we still have our salvation. Told at 8 o'clock, we oftentimes tell people, you're going to make me lay my religion down. <laughs> yeah, y'all say it in California too, huh? <laughs> you're going to make me lay my religion down. But while you may be laying your religion down, you ought to thank God that your salvation is still there. Because as you lay down your religion, the Lord still has you in his hands. I wish you'd talk back to me. You can't travel anywhere without being in his hands. But I want to encourage you, don't, don't, don't lay it down. Just, just hold on to it. Don't lay it down. The cuss out ain't worth it, I promise you. Going off ain't worth it, I promise you. Because you serve the kind of God that will fight for you. Come on, I know y'all. I said you serve the kind of God that will fight for you. You ain't got to go in. You ain't got to knock if you buck because that's the kind of God. Okay, all right. Anyway, uh, 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 your salvation, you never lose your salvation. I remember being in children's choir and we sang a song. You can have the whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. What does that mean, preacher? Thank you. Thank you for asking again. What it literally means is you can have everything else. But because I have Jesus, Matter of fact, scriptures declare I'm already victorious. Good. My God today, because you got Jesus, you already are victorious. That's why I don't understand why y'all get so, or why we get so defeated. Why we get so defeated. The Bible already told us that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. What you miss in the text. See, that's what's wrong. We don't, we don't read, read. We don't understand. We need to learn how to read, read, not just skim. All right, sir. All right, sir. See, we shout, no weapon formed against me going to prosper. Did you hear that the weapon will be formed? <laughs> Rewind, I'll do it again. I said, did you hear that the weapon will be formed whatever is going on around you your weapons are around you but God's got an edge of protection all around you and you know I'm a big Marvel guy I love Marvel movies and there was a movie I, I don't remember which one of them it was but uh, uh, they had the weapons pulled on them oh no that was X-Men I'm sorry it was X-Men and uh the weapons came, and Magneto, that's Marvel too, thank you brother, I knew somebody helped me out. Uh, and Magneto came out while they had the weapons. And while they had them drawn, all he did was just lift his hand. Everybody with a weapon, the weapons came out. And you know, I'm kind of crazy with what, the way I see things, and God told me right then, that's how I'm doing you. He said, the weapon may be formed, and it may even be pointed your way. But when I come, I'm just going to lift my hands and the weapons. I wish y'all get this thing. You got to understand that God has a way of working. That even though the weapon is formed, it won't prosper. Ooh, I wish somebody would understand what's going on. See, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping on what's going on around me because I know it's going to happen. But do all you want because it ain't going to prosper. All right, we're moving. Y'all Y'all going to make me work hard and I got to go preach again. Lord have mercy. Oh. His salvation never ceases. His sovereignty never changes. But then lastly, and I'm moving, and I'm getting back down the road, his strength never collapsed. His strength never collapsed. Salvation never ceases. Sovereignty never changes. But his strength, Never collapse. Verse 19, it tells us, it says, my brothers, listen, uh, it talks about the ability to do. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that our strength today is not based on how much we can go to the gym and bench press. Our strength today is not based upon if you can come up here, which I'm sure you probably can and do more push-ups than me. Got a bar, how many uh, pull-ups you can do. No, your strength is not based upon how big your arms are. But your strength today is 
based and here to remind somebody in all that you go through and everything that's going on that the Lord is your strength. As a matter of fact, the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, Paul pins it saying something like this. It says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Y'all missed your shout. Y'all really going to make me work and sweat my little shirt out. I said the Bible says in Philippians 4, 13, Paul pins the passage to encourage the church of Philippi in the midst of turmoil that you can do all things through Christ that's giving you the strength. You know what I don't understand? See, I, when I was a little boy, I used to watch Popeye the Sailor Man. See, Popeye was merely a little feeble man who really couldn't do much. Didn't have the ability to overcome, win a battle. As a matter of fact, the way the cartoon writes it, and it's a sermon all by itself, that Popeye would first get beat up. <laughs> Popeye would first be beat up. Be placed in a situation where he didn't understand what the next move would be. Popeye would be in a place where he didn't know how in the world he was going to survive. He would be, he'd have a black eye and he'd have a broken rib. But then Popeye would go to his source. Oh my God, my God. Popeye would then break open a can of spinach. Then out of nowhere... Popeye's arms would get real big. Then after his arms would get real big, he had enough courage in his heart woo, to know that he could defeat the opponent. Well, brothers and sisters, I stopped by to encourage your hearts down here at the second location at, for Second Baptist Church to let you know that you don't need any spinach in order for you to defeat the enemy. You don't have to rely on a little can of spinach. All you got to do is learn how to lean and depend on the Lord because the Bible declares that the Lord is your strength. I wish you'd talk back to me. And because you've got Jesus, you can win every battle. You can overcome every situation. I wish I had about five of y'all in the room this morning that would declare I can overcome what I'm going through. I, I got the strength to make it. Why? Because I got Jesus. Jesus and he's the one that strengthens me As a matter of fact when you're unable to stand he sustains you when you can't go on he guides you when you're in a deep valley he detours you to higher ground I believe uh, Lord what Habakkuk is trying to tell us is that God our Lord he's enabling us to rise above our circumstances and that God will give us the strength to stand above the battle I'm glad to know today that God, he's still my Prince of Peace. I'm glad to know the day that the Lord is fighting battles for me. Have I got a witness here? I'm glad to know the day that God is still working it out. And because he's working it out, I have a perpetual praise can't nothing stop me now I'm on the move can't nothing stop me now there's higher ground I wish I had somebody in the room today that knows God he's getting ready to turn your situation around I said, God, he's getting ready 
to turn your doubts into shouts. I said, God, he's getting ready to blow your mind. Can I just tell you this? Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God has for you. Don't you worry. Don't you give in. Because God, he's getting ready to turn your situation around. And I wish somebody in the room had a perpetual praise. I wish somebody in the room said, I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to lift him up. Because because his word said if I be lifted up I'll draw all men under me come on and lift him come on and lift him come on and lift him lift him higher lift him higher can I tell you why he needs to be lifted it was one Friday they marched him up Gail got the heel and they put a nail in his right hand. They put a nail in his left hand. They put him up there on that cross, y'all. And they put nails in his feet. Have I got a witness here? When he was up there, he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders. They put a crown of thorns upon his head. They pierced him in the side and he died. Didn't he die? Didn't he, didn't he? Didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hands. Are you glad he got up? Are you glad he got up? Are you glad he got up? He got up so that you can bless his name. He got up so that you can praise his name. Somebody give him the praise in here. I'm done with you. I just want to encourage your hearts. Let you know today that you ought to have a perpetual praise can't nothing stop me now I'm on the move can't no devil in hell stop me now I'm on the move you ought to want to go higher you ought to want to go higher anybody want to go higher nothing can stop me now I'm all the way up. Hey, nothing can stop me now. I'm all the way up. Are you all the way up? Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. I'm done. Got to hurry back. Got to hurry back. But listen, beloved God, God wants a perpetual praise from you. God wants a praise that you won't just limit to what He does for you. You don't just praise him for the car, the crib, and the clothes. But you praise him because you're in expectation for what's coming next. Lord, I don't know what it is. It may be a storm. But I'm going to thank you right now. I'm going to praise you right now. Because I got you, I know I'm going to already win. So I'm leaving after this. Let me, let me just confuse the enemy real quick. Songwriters have us believing things sometimes you got to be careful what you sing beloved got to be careful the songs that may even be church songs that you sing that aren't theologically sound it's a song that says what the devil meant for evil God turned it for my good that's not what the Bible says the Bible says what the devil meant for evil God worked it for my good Oh, oh y'all missing it. I'll do it for you one more time and I promise I'm giving the mic up. I'm going to leave you. 
Song says what the devil meant for evil. God turned it for your good. Which would, which would mean that in order for it to be good, God would have to reach his hand out and switch the situation. That's not the kind of God that we serve. The Bible actually says what the devil meant for evil. God used it for your good. I wish y'all get joy in here. What does that mean? Whatever you going through, God has already worked it out for you to be victorious, baby. Whatever you dealing with, he's already worked it out for you to get a win. You ought to learn how to celebrate him in advance. Blessings of the Lord be upon you.